Wood at the University of Iowa. Here is Wood to the football, and the game is underway. It'll be a short one, and it'll be Smith taking in the ball at the 15. He's out to the 20, coming to the center of the field, and comes out to about the 18 or 19 yard line before he is hit and upended by Derek Howard. So it was a short kickoff by Bob Wood, taken by Smith at the 15. He got out and out to about the 24 yard line. Ray Smith comes to the left side, and Reggie Arnold will go into the slot. High formation behind Vitale. This is the first play of the football game. Vitale with 60 and 141 throws on the first play and overthrows, and it's almost intercepted down here in the vicinity of the 40 yard line by Dwight Kitt. And so on the first play of the game, Mark Vitale unleashes one out for the left flat intended for Reggie Arnold, and it was almost fucked up. Today they tried the air, but it was incomplete. Jesse Townsend and Jaffe Oliver are the wide receivers to the left side on second down and 10 from the Purdue 24-yard line for Vitale. He fakes to Skibinski, pitches back to Durking out to the 25, he's to the 30, and to the 31-yard line. And a pickup of about seven yards of the play by Scotty Durkin before Jim Bolden. A cornerback and Calvin Neal, Calvin O'Neal, a linebacker, bringing down. Jaffe Oliver running some pretty good interference there for Scott Durkin carrying the football out across the 30-yard line. The man coming from the inside out to get to Durkin took him out of the play. This time, two tight ends, Eubank and Wargowski. Jaffe Oliver, the wide receiver, he's to the right. Here is a give to Durkin, looks for the outside, gets the first down across the 25, across the uh, 35, across the 40. And out to the 42-yard line. Power running by Scotty Durkin. The four safety man, Jerry Zuber. And the linebacker, Kevin O'Neill, finally bring him down. Good running by Scott Durkin. A first down for the Boilermakers. They mark it out to the 42-yard line. Durkin are in the eye behind Vitale. Boilermakers has the, have the open side to the right. Here is Vitale to Skibinski up the middle. Pretty good yardage. Across the 45 to the 46-yard line, and that'll be a pickup of four yards before Jerry Vogel, a linebacker, and the middle guard, Bob Lang, put the stop on Skibinski, carrying the football for the first time and getting from the 42 out to the 46. Second and six of the 46. Vitale with the eye, gives the tailback jerking up the middle, and about three yards, moves it out to the 49-yard line before the linebacker, Calvin O'Neill, a 230-pound senior from Saginaw, Michigan, puts the stop on him. Reggie Arnold, two tight ends. It's third down and three now at the 49-yard line. Big play for the Boilermakers if they're to keep this drive alive. Here is Skibinski, a fake, a pitch back to Durkin. He's at the 50. He's going to get the first down as he takes it to about the 47-yard line of Michigan before Dwight Hicks, the safety man, comes up to make the stop. That time, Vitale was able to pitch it back after faking to Skibinski, and uh, Durkin knew what to do with it. Got the first down. Wide right side of the field is to the right of quarterback Vitale. Arnold and Oliver are that way. Skibinski and Durkin in the eye. Here is a give to Skibinski. Big hole right side across the 45, across the 40. Michigan has recovered the football on a fumble by Skibinski at the 41-yard line. Michigan gets the football. And coming up with it is Jerry Vogel, a linebacker from Cincinnati. He recovers a John Skibinski fumble after Skibinski had picked up some pretty good yardage. John, so there's the turnover. The wide receiver to the left is Jim Smith. His quarterback, Rich Leeds, has Lytle in the back. Here's a give to the uh, Lytle. He goes to the left side, moves across the 45, and out to about the 47-yard line. And they strike like lightning as that ball goes from Leeds to Lytle, and he's through the line and up to the 48-yard line. A gain of six yards of the play by Rob Lytle, and he now is over the 1,000-yard mark side also, who is Jim Smith. Here's a give to the tailback. It'll be Huckleby. Huckleby to the 50, to the 45, and all down to the 41 or 42-yard line of Purdue, and another first down. Down to the 41-yard line. Huckleby was finally caught and dragged down as he got near the 42. They mark it at the 42. In underneath is quarterback Leach, who has hit his last eight passes, four in each game. Here is a give to the first man. Lytle takes it inside the 40 down near the 36-yard line. And he picks up another uh, six or seven yards before the linebacker, Kevin Mott. The freshman from Mishawaka Marion puts the stop on it. 
three on the ground plays. Lytle carry twice, Huckleby once, and we know why they're up in the top in the Big Ten. Stevenson is right, Jim Smith is to the left side. As Leach has the eye formation, here is a give to Lytle, and this time they stop him with flag, however. Lytle gets a couple of yards, takes it into the 35 to the 34-yard line. However, their flags are all, all over the place. Coming up is Cleveland Crosby and uh, Mott helping out on the play. A penalty is against the Purdue Boilermaker. And Smith is the wing back. Here is the reverse going to Smith. Tries the left side, cuts back in inside the 30, takes it down to the 26 to 27 yard line. Jim Smith, who was the wing back on the right that time, came around and got the handoff from Rich Leach and took it inside and moved it down to about the 26 yard line. Here is Smith coming wide to the right side. Kurt Stevenson is to the left. Lytle and Huckabee in the eye formation. Here's Lytle up the middle, big hole, 20, still on his feet at the 15, at the 10, he's knocked down at about the 8-yard line, maybe the 7, and another big first down for the Michigan Wolverines, and they execute superbly. They're knocking out the middle of the line, and uh, Lytle is having, so far here in the first five minutes of the game, some pretty good running room, and he's doing a very good job. He's run for 31 yards on three carries. Leach in underneath with the eye formation of Huckleby and Lytle. Leach using the long count. Here is a fake to Lytle. Leach keeps the football at the five. Touchdown. Nobody put a hand on him. Rich Leach. Fake to Lytle up the middle and one wide left. And Leach goes in for the touchdown. And the Michigan Wolverines have taken the lead with nine minutes and 38 seconds left to play. An eight-yard run by quarterback Rich Leach. His ninth touchdown on the ground this year. He's also thrown for 10. 46 out of 47 in extra point conversion. Here's the snap, here's the kick, it's up, and it is good. So there is a timeout on the field with the score Michigan 7, Purdue nothing. You're listening to Purdue Football, your network host, the Coca-Cola Bottlers of Indiana. Andy's in the North Park Arcade has a complete line of men's... ...with 57 at I-64, just nine miles from Evansville Airport. Deep for the Watermakers, and Wood gets his foot into this one since it's sky high. Holt's got it at the four. He comes out to the ten, stops, gets a little running room, goes to the sideline, 15, 20, 25, 30, knocks out of bounds, and he comes near the 35-yard line. Jim Pickens from Sylvania, Ohio, Jr., came up to make the stop on Russell Pope, but I got to say something for Pope. He really put a move on a would-be tackler down inside about the 10-yard line, John. Just stopped flat, then was able to go to the sidelines and did an excellent job. That was a great quick move he put on, and it freed him for that next 25 yards. Joe makers Ray Smith and Reggie Arnold come wide to the left side. Skibinski and Durking are in the eye. Wargowski's the tight end right side. Here's the fake to Skibinski. Pitch back to Durking. He's to the 35. Trying to get outside. Gets away from one tackler. Knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line. He got out of the hands of Jim Bolden, but then was hit and knocked out at the 40 by Dom uh, Tedesco, who is a uh, defensive end, and Jim Pickens, the cornerback. Was able to get five yards on a play that looked like it might be a no-gainer at best. Second and five at the Purdue 40 for the Boilermakers. The wide receivers, Oliver and Arnold, are to the right side. Here is a give to Skibinski up the middle. He's getting about three and a half yards. Moves it up close to the 44 before Dom Tedesco, the defensive end, puts the stop on Skibinski. The previous time that Skibinski had carried the ball, he had fumbled at the Michigan 42, and the Wolverines recovered and marched there for the touchdown on the right. Boilermakers need a yard. They're just shy of the 49. They're on 49. They're on 44. Here's a gift to Durking. He dives over the middle and goes to the 46-yard line on the first down. That time, Durking went sky high, leaping over the tacklers in the middle, over his own man, and he got the first down. He's moved it to the 47-yard line. First and 10 for Purdue at the Purdue 47. In the slot. Wargowski tight end left side. Vitale using the long count. Goes back to throw for the second time this afternoon. Throws over the middle. It is caught by Reggie Arnold inside the Michigan 40 down to the 38-yard line. First down. He's tackled by Dwight Hicks, the safety man. And that time, Vitale threaded the needle, throwing in some traffic. But Reggie Arnold held on to it. And that's his 15th reception of the 1976 season. First down, Purdue. The afternoon for Purdue. They are at the Michigan 37. Ray Smith and Reggie Arnold are wide to the right side. Vitale gives to Skibinski. No place to go at the middle. Gets only about a yard as he takes it to about the 36. Is John Hennessy, a senior tackle, hims him in there. And Skibinski really couldn't find any hole. He was able to just lunge forward and pull down by Hennessy at the 36 yard line. Skibinski tied in right side. Skibinski and Durking are in the eye on second and nine at the Michigan 36. 
The tally is one out of two in the passing department. Goes back to throw again. Looks, throws out to the left right. It is caught. Caught by Jaffe Oliver at the 20. He's to the 19 and the hit and brought down by Jim Pickens. They really gave Mark Vitale some pretty good protection that time and throwing well down the left side. John? Joe, I think that time Michigan was playing Vitale for the pass because he had a four-man line, four men backing up the line, and three in the deep secondary. They thought Mark would pass, but he threw it so well and got time enough so that uh, the pass was successful. Vitale. Fly up bubbles as he tried to hand off and then comes back and gets it at the 21-yard line. He was going to hand off to the second man through Scott Durking, but the ball was hanging in midair and fell. Vitale fell in quickly on it, falling on it at the 21-yard line, so it'll be a loss of two. It'll be second down and 12 yards to go. This time on first down, just a fumble. Ray Smith wide left. Reggie Arnold is to the right. Here's Vitale back to throw. Throws over the middle. is caught for the tight end. And taking it inside the 15 down to the uh, 17-yard line or to the 16-yard line will be Purdue. Eubank making the reception. He is hit by Calvin O'Neill. Also helped out by Jerry Vogel. So it'll be third down and four at the Michigan 13. Reggie Arnold goes wide to the right side. Two tight ends. Keena Turner and Eubank this time. Here is a pitch back by Durking, looking for room, gets outside. He goes near the 11-yard line, maybe the 10, before he's finally pushed out on the near sideline. A pitch back to Scott Durking. Started up the left side, then had to cut very wide. He got near the 10-yard line. It's going to be short of the first down by a yard and a half as Calvin O'Neill, a linebacker, finally put the stop on him. With the wide receiver, Reggie Arnold, to the right side. The ends are tight. And uh, the Skibinski Durking eyes, Durking gets it, and he tries the right side. I don't know where he got it. I don't think he got, a, I think he's a half a yard short. Tried the right side. John, look at it closely. Joe, the hole was there, but it was closed very quickly, and I think Michigan's going to uh, have stopped the Boilermakers. Durking had good momentum. He was well met as he got just inside the 10-yard line, stopped at the nine and a half. Stevenson comes wide to the right. Smith goes to the left side. Leach with the high formation of Huckabee and Lytle. Crowd is loud. The snap. Here's Lytle up the middle. He's to the 15. He's to the 19-yard line. And a nine-yard pickup by Rob Lytle, the fullback senior from Fremont, Ohio, hit by Cleveland Crosby. Lytle now carries the football nine yards. And on our chart of figures here, he's got 40 yards on four carries. Second and one at the Michigan 19. Here is the tailback, Huckleby, trying the left side, gets across the 21. He got the first down, and he got the first down on the second effort. After the Boilermakers prevented him from making the first move, he was hit and brought down by Marcus Jackson, the freshman tackle from Lima, Ohio. At quarterback this afternoon for the Boilers on the right side. Here is Leach turning around. He's in trouble. Now he pitches off to uh, Huckleby, and he's hit at the 25-yard line. Maybe to the 26. Mike Northington, the cornerback, comes up to make the stop. And on that particular play, it looked to me like that Rick Leach was a little undecided. He got the football turned around looking for somebody. Nobody was there. All of a sudden, he pitched back to Huckleby. Lytle and Huckleby are in the eye. Leach waiting for the snap from his center. Gets it. Fakes gives to Huckleby. Trying the outside right. He's across the 30-yard line to the 31, and he got the first. No, he didn't get the first down. Moves it out to about the 31, and hit and brought down on the near sideline. Rock Supan makes the tackle, helped out also on the play by Paul Beery. So it'll be shy of the first down by about a yard. It'll be marked at the 31-yard line, third down one. Receiver, he goes to the left side this time. We have two tight ends. Eight a yard. Huckleby is the uh, tailback. Here's a give to uh, fake the line. Leach skips. He gets the first down, 35. He's to the 40, out to the 41, 42-yard line. And a gain of 11 on the play. Rick Leach running the option to perfection. Moves it across the 40 to the 42 and another. First down for the Michigan Wolverines. And somebody else has to be there after the commitment if it's a pitch out to cover the man that's pitched too. So that makes it tough. And when the quarterback is good, almost impossible. First and 10 at the 42. Lytle the call up to the 45-yard line and another four yards. Maybe a three and a half as he moves it to the 45. He started out at the 42. He's hit by linebacker Fred Arrington, the junior from Fort Wayne. So Davis now at fullback. Leach, second down. Gives to Davis, there's a fumble, and Purdue has the football. The Boilermakers recover the football at the 48-yard line. And coming up with the football is 
Fred Arrington. That is his second recovery of 1976. The handoff to Davis. Davis couldn't hold on to it, and Arrington recovers the football at the Michigan 48. Kaminsky and Durking are in the eye behind the tally. First and 10 at the 48, less than two minutes to play here in the opening quarter of today's game. Here is Vitale, back to throw, throws out to the right flat, it is caught by Ray Smith, inside the 30, he's knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line by Jim Pickens, first down Purdue. Vitale looking better this afternoon in the passing than he has in a long, long time. So that particular time, Michigan again was in their passing defense, and again Vitale got a good cut from Smith, hit him on the far sideline very, very well with precise throwing. First and 10 at the Michigan 28 for the Boilermakers. Here is Vitale running the option, pitching back to Durking. He's at the 25. He fumbles the football, but the Boilermakers have uh, recovered. It's finally blown dead. The Boilermakers get the football. It was recovered by Jesse Townsend. Durking fumbled the football. He went after it. I thought first he may have recovered his own, but then it squirted away from him, and it was recovered by uh, Townsend. Calvin O'Neill and Jim Bolden were the ones to hit Durking and knocking down at the 23-yard line. That's the open side of the field. Vitale gives to Skaminski up the middle. He's at the 20, 15, 10. He's still on his feet at the 5. Down the four. First down. Big run by John Skaminski. Right up the middle. He was finally caught by Jerry Zuber and wide hit. Beautiful sparkling run by John Skaminski. John, first down to go from the four. 50 seconds to play, opening quarter. Boilermakers trying to tie the game. Going wide right is Reggie Arnold. Two tight ends. Kaminsky jerking in the eye. First and goal from the four. Vitale gets it. Gives to Durking. He's at the four. Touchdown! Durking barrels his way in. Find the right side of the line. Scoring his touchdown. And the Boilermakers have an opportunity to tie with a point after coming. 37 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Calvin O'Neill and Jim Pickens were hanging on to Durking, but he carried them into the goal line. And there's a Michigan player shaken up. Rock Supan is on. Supan, three of three in the extra point department. Fury will hold. Here's the snap. Here's the kick by Supan. It is up. It's good. And there's a break in the action with 37 seconds remaining. It's Purdue 7, Michigan 7. Got a touchdown of any kind against the Michigan Wolverines. They've shut out four of their eight opponents this year. The deep men are Max Richardson, Jim Smith, and Harlan Huckabee. Smith stands in the middle as the kickoff comes for the uh, Boilermakers and it is set into the end zone. Let's get 15 seconds in here for station identification. You're listening to Purdue Football, your network host, the Coca Cola Bottlers of Indiana. This is WROZ Evansville. It's now 101. We have 37 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Coming wide to the right side is Jim Smith. The eye formation for the Wolverines. Here is Leach faking to the first man. Keeps the football. Now pitches back to the tailback. And it'll be Huckabee run out of bounds to the far sidelines as he goes across the 25. Pat Harris, the cornerback, finally pushes Huckleby out of bounds, and let's see where they're going to mark it, near the 25-yard line. Maybe he did not get to the 25, so it'll be a gain of about four and a half yards. It'll bring up a second down, and we'll give him to the 25, second down and five. We have two tight ends. Here is a fake to Davis. Here's a give to Huckleby. Caught behind the line of scrimmage and knocked down at the 24-yard line. He is hit by Pat Harris and knocked down. Huckleby, the tailback, getting the pitch from Rich Leach, and he was knocked down at the 24-yard line, a loss of a yard on the play. It'll be third down and six yards to go now for the Michigan Wolverines. In the first period, at the end of the quarter, the score is Purdue 7, Michigan 7. Down and six at their own 24-yard line. Two wide receivers go to the right side. Leach the throw for the first time today. He throws left-handed. He throws the bomb down the near far sidelines. It's incomplete. It was intended for Smith. Defending on the play was Jerome King. And King is complaining there was an offensive pass interference on that particular call. John Anderson is on the punt for the Michigan Wolverines. Averaging 39-6. Sends a line driver down here for... Jerome King at the 30, 35, looking for room at the 40, gets away at the 45, and he comes out to about the 46 or 47-yard line. Jerome King picking his way through the left side, finally was tackled by Jim Smith. He was also hit by Walt Downing. Rick Leach had hit his last eight passes in a row before he threw that one. That's only the 65th pass that he's tried this year. He's hit 35 of them. Coming wide to the right side, Ray Smith and Reggie Arnold. 
at the 46-yard line of Purdue. Vitale first down, waits for the snap. He gets it. He gives to Durking outside left, tripped up, and gets about to the 47 to 48. He was hit and dropped down by John Hennessy. Actually, Durking almost tripped himself, I think, got his feet tangled up, and Hennessy was near him and held him down at the 48-yard line. Wargowski tight end left side. That's the close side of the field. Second down and eight yards to go. Tally underneath, using the long count, goes back to throw, looks to the right, dumps one over the middle, is caught by Skidinski at the 50, he's to the Michigan 45-yard line. Shy of the first down by about a yard of the play. Calvin O'Neill, the linebacker, is the initial hit on Skibinski. Vitale just dumped it right over the middle. Skibinski out of the backfield, caught it, and moved another five yards down to the 45-yard line. The Boilermakers have third and one now at the Michigan 45. Third and one at the Michigan 45. Two tight ends, Eubank and Wargowski. Here is Durking, got the first down, and then some as he moves it down near the 40-yard line. A near five-yard pickup for Scotty Durking. He is hit and brought down by Greg Morton, also helped out by Calvin O'Neill. The Boilermakers have a first down. They have it just outside the Michigan 40-yard line. We'll call it closer to the 41. First play, Vitale with Skibinski and Durking in the eye. Vitale picks to Skibinski, pitches back to Durking, looking for room outside, can't get it. He's dropped at the 41-yard line. Started outside, then tried to cut back in and couldn't find room. Calvin O'Neill and Jerry Zuber were there to bring him down. O'Neill's the linebacker, and Zuber is the safety man. The ball at the Michigan 41. Three wide receivers this time. Ray Smith is to the right. Townsend and Arnold are to the left on second and ten. Vitale rolls back to his left, gets the rush, dumps it out. Skibinski's got it inside the 40 to 35. Looking for room, comes this way. He's to the 31-yard line. Just couldn't find anybody to give him a block on that particular play. Calvin O'Neill finally came up to bring him down. Good job by John Skibinski again, and once more, the pressure was on. Michigan in a four-man line. They expected the pass that time, but they rushed very well from that four-man line with both ends converging on Vitale again, a particularly nine, the man from the right. Nine-yard pickup on the Vitale to Skibinski pass. Here's a keeper by Vitale, first down. Moves it inside the 30. Vitale on the keeper, eating less than a yard. Got it, and a first down for the Boilermakers. Slot. Tied in right side is Wierkowski. Skibinski and Durking in the eye. Vitale on first and ten from the 30. Gives to Skibinski. Slides off the right side and gets about three yards. Takes it near the 27-yard line. Calvin O'Neill, the linebacker, in on the tackle. He's the uh, one of the top uh, tacklers for Michigan this year with 94 tackles. Vitale with Skibinski and Durking again in the eye. Vitale gives to his tailback, Durking to the 25-yard line, and then is upended. One of the men there, again, is Calvin O'Neill, and he seems to be there about every time somebody has the football and running toward the line. He comes out, so the Boilermakers will have three wide receivers. Ray Smith is to the right and to the left, Reggie Arnold and Reggie Townsend, or Jesse Townsend. Here is Vitale giving to Durking as he crossed him up. He's at the 20, he's at the 15, he's at the 10, he's at the 5. Touchdown! 25-yard run by Scotty Durking. And the Boilermakers have taken the lead. They crossed him up. And three wide receivers. Barr thinking Vitale was going to throw. He gave to his tailback Durking. He went to the right, broke away, and goes 25 yards for the go-ahead touchdown. And the Boilermakers have taken the lead 13-7. Durking has now run the ball 15 times for 74 yards. Supan to kick the extra point. It is blocked. It is blocked by Mike Jolly. And so with 9.57 left to play, there is a break in the action in the second period. It's Purdue 13, Michigan 7. A drive of 54 yards in nine plays with the final play, a 25-yard run by Scott Durking has given the Boilermakers a 13-7 lead with nine minutes and 57 seconds remaining here in the second period. Ready to kick off from left to right. He puts his foot into it, sails it down the middle. It'll be taken at the 15-yard line by Smith. He comes out to the 20, him then at the 25, breaks away to the 26-yard line. So Jim Smith returns the kickoff and is hit by Willie Harris at the 26 or 27-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from that point for the Michigan Wolverines, who are trailing, would you believe it, 13-7 to here in the second period of today's game. First and 10 for the Wolverines. 
Rick Leach at quarterback. He gives to Lytle up the middle. He's to the 30 and up to the 32-yard line. And he is hit by Marcus Jackson, the freshman tackle from Lima, Ohio. So the little uh, rest that he had because of the slight injury apparently hasn't affected Lytle at all. Assignments does a tremendous job of faking, drawing the defense out. Wide receivers to either time this time. Lytle gets the call across the 35 and out up to about the 37 or 38 yard line. It appears to be very close to a first down. The tackle is made by Blaine Smith, the defensive end for the Boilermakers from Gary, a senior. It'll be necessary to measure. They'll bring the chain from the far sideline. Durking had a thrilling 25-yard touchdown a while ago, just a few seconds ago, to give the Boilermakers the present 13-7 lead. Leach with a first and 10, gives to Lytle, tries the middle, gets to the 40, and boy, he is really tough. He had about three line, three Boilermakers hanging on to him. Supan, Jackson, also helped out by Lauschen and Crosby and on the play, and he still took them for about a yard and a half after he was hit. Second and five at the Michigan 42. Again, wide receivers to either side. Leach gives to his Huckleby, his uh, tailback. He moves across the 45 to the 46-yard line. That's a gain of about four yards of the play before he is brought down by Ken Lushen. Lytle and Huckleby are in the eye. Leach using the long count. He gives to, uh, fakes to Lytle, keeps the football, pitches back to Huckleby. Tipped off behind the line of scrimmage and dropped at the... 45-yard line, and he is hit by Paul Beery and brought down. Huckleby unable to get the first down yardage. Hit behind the line and dropped between the 45 and the 46, and the pursuit that time was very good on the option. Side gave to Huckleby, and he is tripped up. A punting situation. John Anderson is on, standing in outside his 35. Two deep men are for the Boilermakers. Harrison King, here's the boot. It's sky high. King comes up. Let's the ball bounce. It rolls inside the tee, and it goes inside. The Boilermakers let it roll, and Michigan couldn't get to it, and it rolled into the end zone. It'll be brought back up to the 20-yard line. A break. <laughs> Joe, that's a good break, and you can see right there why it kind of pays to be lucky, because that ball took a bounce, and uh, then took another bounce, and just took off like a rabbit. Michigan was there attempting to stop it, but it bounced so quickly and so low that they couldn't get to it. And that's the luck. Skubinski and Durkin in the eye. The football midway between the sideline stripes. Vitale using the long count. Gets the snap. Gives to Durkin. He tries the middle and then cuts to the left side and goes for a couple of yards. It is really hard to get through that line. Though he did it a while ago. Going to the weak side. John Hennessy and Calvin O'Neill making the stop on Durkin. He is given three yards of the play out to the 23-yard line. So Durkin this afternoon has amassed 77 yards. Here is Vitaly giving to Skibinski. He comes across the 25 and out near the 27-yard line. He is hit by the tackle, Greg Morton, the senior, the second-leading tackler on the Michigan team with 82 of them this year. A play from the sidelines is brought in by Jaffe Oliver. He goes to the left side. That's the open side of the field. Still two tight ends. Eubank is on the right side. Here is a pitch back to Durking, looking for room. He's out to the 29-yard line, just shy of the first down by less than a yard. Ooh, that's very, very close, John, with the fourth down play coming up. Ran right where there were the most Michiganders. They defensed it very, very well. John Anderson, their putter, is the man who is injured down on the field. John Anderson, who plays the defensive end and also punts, is uh, being attended to down at the 24-yard line. Certainly, two weeks from today it won't be, right? Uh, certainly won't. So it'll be fourth down, inches to go. Just shy of the 30 for the Boilermakers. Their own 30. Here's a gift to Durkin. First down, and then some. He got two yards, diving over the middle. And the crowd is alive. A gutty call. Scott Durkin dives over the middle. And the Boilermakers keep the drive alive. He got three yards in the play. Vitaly with Skibinski and Durking in the eye. Vitaly gets it. He gives to Skibinski. He's to the 35, to the 36. Pong his way up the middle. John got to for the... about three yards. Pardon me, John. Joey got to the line of scrimmage that time before the blockers had moved ahead. Uh, Rich Wettendorf and uh, John Lefevre were the two men ahead of him. And Skibinski banged into their backs. They got a second surge then and picked up two or three yards for John. But he was there very quickly. Second and seven. Here's a give to tailback Durking. He's to the 40. He's to the 41. 
And across the 41, shy of the first down by about a yard and a half, but a good gainer before Tom Sebrun, a defensive end from Detroit, a sophomore, made the stop on him. It's between the 41 and the 42-yard line. The Boilermakers need to move just past the 43 for the first down. Durkin gets another one. He's at the 45, and he's up to the 49-yard line. Zuber made the tackle. He's the safety man. And that time, the offensive line, Lefevre, Gibson, Wettendorf, Zelensky, and Lafari really opened the middle for Scott Durkin. And he needed at that time to hit Durkin that well. Durkin is around the 100-yard mark unofficially at the moment. Here is Vitale giving to Skibinski. He's to Michigan territory, but just barely to the 49-yard line. He went from the 49 to the 49. Vogel, a linebacker, and Morton, a tackle, were in on Skibinski. And we have John carrying the football today, nine times for 42 yards. We have Durking with 20 for 98. Skibinski and Durking are in the eye. Vitale retreats to throw, looks out, looks to the left, throws over the middle, it is caught, dropped by Wargowski. Couldn't hold it at the 45-yard line. Tried to pick that one off. It was thrown a little bit short. Wargowski was sliding down, trying to make the catch, and couldn't do it. So in the passing department now, Vitale has thrown eight times. He's completed six of them. A third down for the Boilermakers coming up and about four yards to go. It is now third and eight, and we have three wide receivers. Two off the mark to the left. Ray Smith is to the right. That's the close side. Here's Vitale giving to Durkin. Durkin gets away at the 45, still on his feet down to the 41-yard line. He's very, very close to a first down. Again, they did like they did on the scoring play of 25 yards, had three receivers. Michigan was playing the pass they give to Durkin, and this time he goes to the weak side left. O'Neill and Sebron finally made the stop on him. Now we get a chance to see Joe if the Boilermakers will gamble again on fourth down because I think it's going to be a, a little bit short of that first down, maybe a foot. With Durkin diving over the middle. They need a little bit more this time. Two tight ends. Skibinski and Durkin. Durkin gets the call. He's up in the air. He's to the 40-yard line. And while he's in the air, somebody just twists him toward the sidelines and kind of stretched him out, but he got the first down. The second, fourth down play the Boilermakers have come up with with Durkin going over the top. And the crowd is really enjoying this one so far today. With him out those two and one half game. Again, three wide receivers, Ray Smith to the left, and Townsend and Arnold are to the right. That's the wide side of the field, first and ten. Here's Vitale back to throw, throws out into the right flat. It is intercepted. Looked off by Zuber, comes back at the 15. He's to the 20, he's to the 25, he's to the 30. He comes up to the 35. He's hit and brought down at the 40 yard line. Jerry Zuber makes his fourth interception of 1976. Intercepts the Mark Vitale pass, thrown into the right flat. That is the 12th interception of a Purdue pass this year. And Zuber gets his fourth. And so Michigan stops the drive, takes over the football at their own 40-yard line. So it'll be first and ten for the Wolverines. A minute and 34 left to play here in the second period. Davis running at fullback, leads back to throw, throws out into the flat. It is caught on a diving catch at the Purdue 46-yard line. It is Carl Kurt Stevenson making the reception. Official rules, no, it is not. One official called it a completion, and the other took it away. And the Michigan coaching staff is really upset on that one. One official ruled Kurt Stevenson caught it, but his back was to the official, and the other saw that it did bounce. The eye formation behind Rick Leach. Davis and Lytle are in the eye. Here is Leach back to throw, getting the rush. Throws it over the middle. It is incomplete. It was intended over there for Mark Smirgy. Leach was really hit and uh, dumped in that backfield as he got rid of the football by, uh, by Jackson and Lee Larkins. They really hit him. Leach back to throw, getting the rush, getting the rush. His hit at the 30, gets away, hit again, and fall down back at the 34-yard line. It's Kent Lauschen making the tackle, dumping Leach back there. He couldn't find anybody open. In third down conversions, Michigan is 1-4-4. Four, four. Boilermakers force them to punt, fourth and 16 at their own 34. Exactly a minute to play in the second period. Purdue leads 13-7. Greg Wilner is on the boot for the Michigan Wolverines, standing at the 20, gets the snap, 
he gets it away. High sailing down here. It'll be taken by Harris at the 27. Looking for room at the uh, 30. Comes across to about the 32-yard line. So the Boilermakers will get the football with 41 seconds to play in the second period and a lead of 13 to 7. The punt was for 41 yards. That is the third punt that Michigan has had this afternoon. The Boilermakers have yet had the punt. Vitale waiting for the snap. Gets it. Gives to Skibinski up the hole. 35. He's to the 40. And about eight and a half yards before Tom Sebron makes the stop on him. 15 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Purdue Football, your network host, the Coca-Cola Bottlers of Indiana. This is WROZ Evansville. It's now 132. Wide receivers to either side. Two of them are to the left. Vitale gives to uh, Durking, trying the outside, and he gets only to the 41-yard line and is hit and brought down by Bob Lang. Durking couldn't cut the corner that time, couldn't get outside. Lang held on to him and pulled him out at the 41-yard line. So the gun sounds and the end of the first half. But the Boilermakers go off an ecstatic squad, leading Michigan here today by a score of 13-7. to We'll recap today's first half in just a moment. You are listening to Purdue Football, your network host, the Coca-Cola Bottlers of Indiana. Back at Ross H Stadium here in West Lafayette, where the Boilermakers of Purdue have uh, stunned the Michigan Wolverines, the team that leads the nation, ranked number one in the country, 8-0, 5-0 in conference play. The Boilermakers have a 13-7 lead over the Michigan Wolverines here at halftime. And, John, it is amazing how much a week can affect the squad. Last week, the Boilermakers were down. They uh, really didn't play. The coaching staff said they didn't know what happened. It was 45 to 13 Michigan State. But today, it's a different squad, and they are really playing some super football, some of the finest that we've seen here in 1976. No, there's no question about it in my mind. Uh, and uh, though I do not want to detract from a fine Boilermaker performance, I've got to remind you that I think that a week can make a lot of difference in anybody's attitude. And I think Michigan, undoubtedly, with those eight straight wins under their belt and the four shutouts, uh, is probably inclined just a little bit to rest on their laurels. Bo Schembechler said uh, earlier this week that if there was a team in the conference that could upset the Wolverines, it was Purdue. Obviously, he was worried about complacency, and obviously at halftime, he'll have a chance to explain complacency a little bit more to his football team because they trail right now 13-7. to Leach didn't hit any of his first half passes the last two weeks. Rick has been 4-4 four and four each time, but today he's 0-3 so far in the ballgame. So we'll have a lot of things to worry about in the second half as the teams have come back on the field. We'll be ready for the second half kickoff in just a moment. First half, Rob Lytle picked up 59 yards, so he's gained 1,054 here in 1976, bettering his performance of last year of 1,040. The record at Michigan in one season is held by Ron Johnson in 1968 when he gained 1,391 yards. The kickoff by the Boilermakers, Sovereign puts it downfield, Smith takes it at the 5, 10, 15, comes out at the 20, breaks the tackle, comes across the 25, and all the way out to the 29-yard line. Mark Travline brings him down at the 29-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 yards to go. The Michigan Wolverines trailing probably for the first time here in 1976 are behind the Boilermakers 13-7. to The eye formation, Lytle and Huckleby. Huckleby at tailback, Lytle at fullback. Here is Lytle getting the call up the middle, and he goes for about three and a half to four yards, moving it out close to the 34-yard line. The tackle is made for the Boilermakers by Ken Lauschen. So at the 34-yard line, it'll be second down and five yards to go. Lytle, on the first carry of the second half, is able to get five yards. Lytle gets the call. He's got the first down at the 40. He's at the 45. He's at the 50. He's all the way through the, the Purdue 45-yard line. A gainer from the 35 of Michigan to the Purdue 45. And Gene Johnson got in his way and kind of tripped him up as he approached the Purdue 45. So Michigan has started a big drive here. They trail 13 to 7. They have it at their Purdue 45. Here is Leach giving to his tailback. Huckleby gets five and a little bit more as he takes it inside the 40 and is hit and brought down by Kim Cripe, the Syracuse, Indiana end, 225-pound senior. And so Michigan, John, on this particular drive, looking like the first drive they had when they came up with a score the first time they had the football today. 
on second down and short yardage for the Wolverines. Here's Leach running the option, gives back to Huckabee. Huckabee is hit and brought down by Paul Beery as he got near the 38-yard line. And Beery set himself on that particular play and dared Huckabee to come after him, and he laid him down. They knock him down at the 38-yard line. So it'll be third down, third down and about two yards to go for the Michigan Wolverines. 1976, no completions today for quarterback Rick Leach. Leach with third down, short yardage, Huckleby gets it, first down, inside the 30, inside the 25, 20, he's to the 10, he's hit and brought down inside the five-yard line. Lytle, rather than Huckleby, taking the football all the way down to the four-yard line. A beautiful run from the 38 to the four, 34 yards for Rob Lytle. First and goal to go for the Michigan Wolverines at the Purdue four-yard line, and the crowd gets a little loud. And so Rob Lytle holds up his hands, asking for quiet. The official calls for a stoppage of play. First down and goal from the Purdue four for the Wolverines. Here's a pitch back to Huckleby trying to cut the end. He's hit and dropped and knocked out of bounds at the two-yard line. And a real chase over there by Jerome King, and Paul Berry was after him. Huckleby getting the pitch from Leach. Ran out of bounds at the two-yard line. Field is to the right of quarterback Leach. It's second down and goal to goal from the two. Wide receiver Smith is to the left. Here is Leach giving the faking to Lytle, and now he's tackled in the backfield by Jerome King. The quarterback Leach trying to come off to Lytle, then kept the football and was hit and dropped but between the two and three yard line. It'll be closer to the three. It'll be third down and still goal to go. Some great defensive efforts here by the Boilermakers. Leach waiting for the snap. It's third down and goal to go. Leach using the long count. Almost called the Boilermakers off field. Here's Lytle up the middle. No, he didn't get in. He stopped at the one yard line. Rob Lytle trying the middle. Can't get it. The Boilermakers stop him again. They on pile. And the man off the bottom of the pile is Bob Manella, I believe. So it is now fourth down and goal to go from the one yard line. All right, it'll be Lytle and Huckleby in the eye. Smith is to the left. It is fourth down and goal to go from the one. Leach gives to Lytle, keeps the football, pitches back to Huckleby. Fumble, the ball is being chased back at the 15 yard line and picked up by the quarterback Leach and he is tackled and brought down by Paul Berry. And what a goal line to pick. It was first and goal from the four. It was fourth and goal from the one, and the Boilermakers come up with the football all the way back at the 15-yard line. It's first and 10 for the Boilermakers at their own 15 after they stop the Michigan Wolverines. Kaminsky up the middle, first down as he goes to the 30-yard line. He is hit and brought down by Bogle. I'm sorry, it's a 25-yard line, and maybe I might have called it a little soon. Maybe it's not the first down. It's short by about a half a yard. So at the 25-yard line, it'll be second down and less than a yard to go for the Boilermakers. He's the only wide receiver. Eubank and Wargowski, the tight ends. Kubinski and Durking in the eye. Durking gets the call, comes outside, and he gets the first down. Just barely, though. Just barely to the 26 as Jim Pickens makes the stop on him. That was very close, John, with everybody, and I think I thought they would try to go over the middle, and he tried to come outside that time. Skibinski and Durking are in the eye. Vitale on a first down play. Two, four, five men up on the defensive line for the Michigan Wolverines. Durking gets the call, can't go. Tries the middle, hit at the 26-yard line. Durking couldn't find anybody to open a hole. Hennessy and Morton were there, and they they pulled him down at the 26-yard line. Shutting down the run at the 26. So that time, Scotty tried to go over his left tackle, but there was no hole at all, as you described. Reggie Arnold is in the slot to the left. Rogowski tight end right side. Vitale runs the option, gives to Skibinski. He's got a hole, comes to the 35, and a, to the 30, and across to the 30, well, just shy of the 31-yard line. So that's a gain of about four yards. It'll bring up a third down play. The tackle is made by Calvin O'Neill. It is uh, third down and five now at the Purdue 31-yard line. Smith is to the right. Townsend and Arnold are to the left. Vitale gives to uh, Skibinski, and he tries the left side of the line. Gets out to about the 34, but it'll be short of the first down by a couple of yards. Hennessy and Morton again are in on the tackle. And the Boilermakers will be forced to punt for the first time this afternoon. 
Hicks and Smith are deep for the Wolverines. Stand inside the Michigan 30. Here's the snap to Egan. Here's the boot. Oh, it's a beauty. Sky high. Fair catch call for at the 23 and made by Jim Smith. Egan really put his foot into it, got it high. Boilermakers were able to get down and get coverage. An average of 40.1 40, 40 for Egan. That one was 40, 43 yards. The end on the left side is Smurgy. He's in tight. Here's Leach waiting for the snap. Fakes, gives it back to Huckabee, cuts the corner, 25, and tackled at the 29-yard line. Making the tackle is Supan and Blaine Smith also in on the play. Supan's a little slow in getting up. All right, he gets up, looks to the sidelines, drops back to the defensive huddle. They mark it at the 29-yard line. Lytle and Huckleby in the eye. Second and four for Leach and the Wolverines. Huckleby gets the call. Can't go. Comes across the 30 to the 31. And the tackle is made by the Boilermakers at the 31-yard line. And it is made by Fred Arrington and Kim Kripe also in on the play. So a third down play faces the Wolverines. And they need about two and a half. The football is marked at the 31-yard line. Leach waiting for the snap, using the long count. He gives to Fakes the line, keeps the football, pitches back to Huckleby. He cuts the corner and makes the necessary yardage. Travline had a shot at him at the 30-yard line, couldn't uh, get a hold of him, and now he's pushed out of bounds near the 33, 34-yard line. Supan on the play, and Arrington also helping out. They will bring the chain on the far sidelines. From here, it appears that they have the first down. Jim Smith goes wide to the right side for the Wolverines. Kurt Stevenson is to the left. Lytle and Huckleby. Here's a give to Lytle up the middle. He goes only to the 35-yard line. Cleveland Crosby in on it. Helped out by Fred Arrington, and I think Fred got there first. Huckleby trying the middle. Little dipsy doodle in the backfield. He uh, got to the 36-yard line. So Jim Smith is the wing back to the right side this time. Here is Leach back to throw. Getting the rush. Throws out there. It is caught. And caught by Smith. He's down to the 20, 50. Touchdown, Jim Smith. A pass from Rick Leach to Jim Smith is his sixth touchdown reception of the year and the 11th for Leach. And all of a sudden, this game is tied. Leach drops back and throws the home run to Jim Smith. A 64-yard pass play from Leach to Smith. Stunning the Boilermakers, tying the game at 13-13, 5.34 left to play. We'll have to try now for the extra point. Bob Wood is on. Waiting for the snap. Here it is, it's down, here's the kick, it is up, it is good. There's a timeout on the field, Michigan 14, Purdue 13. You are listening to Purdue Football, your network host, the Coca-Cola Bottlers of Indiana. Bob Wood to kick off with the Wolverines. Russell Pope stands inside the five. It's a high end-over-end kick. Pope comes up to the 15, looking for room. He's out to the 20. He's to the 25 and to the 26-yard line. And then him down at the 26. It's Derek Howard making the tackle on Russell Pope. Now Michigan on a long pass play has taken the lead again, 14 to 13. The Boilermakers first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Ray Smith is wide left. Reggie Arnold is in the slot to the left. Wargowski tight end right side. Vitale pitches back to Durkin, cutting the left end. He's out across the 30-yard line into the 31, and a five-yard pickup by Scott Durkin before Jerry Zuber, the safety man from Arch Archibald, Ohio, makes the stop on him. He's actually playing as a sophomore, but he didn't play last year, so this is his first year, and he's going to be a good one. Second and five at the Purdue 31 for the Boilermakers. The wide receivers this time are to the right. Vitale gives to Durking up the middle. He is to the 40-yard line, shy of the first down by about a yard. Calvin O'Neill shut down the run after Durking was able to get about four and a half yards. It'll bring up a third down play now, third and one. The ball is marked just at the 35-yard line. Reggie Arnold is to the left. Two tight ends, Eubank right, Wargowski left. Durkin gets the call, going outside left, gets the first down, and comes out to about the 38-yard line by Jim Bolden. I thought for a second there, John, that Scott Durkin was going to make the loop a little too big and give the Michigan Wolverines a chance to get up on him, but right at the last second, he turned on the speed and moved it up. 
is back almost 100%. First and 10 for the Boilers at their own 37-yard line. Jappy Oliver and Reggie Arnold are wide right. Here is Durking up the middle, tripped up as he gets across the 38-yard line, a gain of about a yard and a half. John Hennessy and Steve Graves are the men who brought him down. Hennessy is a tackle, Graves is a middle guard. Reggie Arnold is in the slot in the right side. Rogowski tight side, left side. Second down and nine. Fatale to throw. Throws for Ray Smith. Catches it at the 42-yard line. A gain of about three. Jim Bolden makes the stop on him. Actually, Smith, who was diving for the catch, uh, just fell down between the 42 and the 43-yard line. That's the 10th receiver this year for the Paris sophomore Ray Smith for about uh, 212 yards. Smith to the right, Townsend and Arnold to the left. Here is Vitale back to throw, getting the rush, dumps it. It is caught by Skibinski at about the 47-yard line. It is close to first down yardage. Calvin O'Neill makes the stop. It depends a great deal where they mark the football. It was an out-of-bounds by Skibinski on the sidelines after he caught it. It appears it may be good for the first down. John, they got to bring it a long way. First and 10. The ball is marked at the Purdue 48-yard line. Reggie Arnold goes to the left. Jaffe Oliver comes to the right side. Wargowski tight in left. Skibinski and Durking in the eye. Vitale waiting for the snap. Gets it. Gives to Skibinski. Up the middle. He goes to the 49. That's only about a yard and a half as he trips himself up. Gets between the 49 and the 50-yard line. It'll bring up a second down play. And the Boilermakers, Boilermakers need about nine. Brown was one of those that was injured earlier. He's seen very little action, only carry the ball three times for six yards. It's second down and nine yards to go. Here is Durkin getting the call at the middle. He's across the 50. He's at the 45. He's to the 44-yard line. And you know, I thought he was going to be tackled at the 50-yard line. All of a sudden, he leaps into the air, takes a long gallop, and Calvin O'Neill finally brings him down as they mark the football near the 43-yard line. It's short of the first down by less than a yard. Durkin coming outside, big yardage, 40 and down to the 38-yard line, and he got a lot, Calvin O'Neill. The linebacker is in on just about every tackle, and as I indicated earlier in the game, here is he is the leading tackler for the Wolverines. First and 10. Vitale using the long count. Still counting, still counting. He runs the option, he gives to Brown. Brown trying the right side, gets a couple, but uh, is unable to cut the corner. Steve Graves is there to bring him down. That may be the last play of the uh, half here for the third period. Nine seconds left, eight, and the gun will be sounding in just a few seconds, four of them. There is the gun, and the third period is over with the score. Michigan 14, Purdue 13. Back of the 15, taking over, but then the second time Michigan had the football, they came up with the score, thus the 14 to 13 spread. Right now it's Purdue's football at the Michigan 36, second down and eight yards to go. The wide receivers are to the left. Here is Vitale back to throw, looking, throwing over the middle. It is intercepted, hooked off by Zuber, hooked off at the 25-yard line and run out of bounds on the far sideline. Zuber makes his second interception of a Vitale pass this afternoon and his fifth of the year. Vitale's pass intercepted by Zuber and the Michigan Wolverines stop the Boilermaker drive at the Michigan 25-yard line. That touchdown pass he threw while ago was the first one he had completed after three incomplete. Here is Leach pitching back to Lytle. Lytle cuts the corner and comes out to the 29. Gets shy of the 30. He's hit by Arrington. Also helped out on the play by Blaine Smith. So that's a gain of about five yards. It's near the 30-yard line. It'll be second down and five now for the Wolverines. Here is a give to Lytle. Left side comes across the 35. He gets the first down. Lytle moves it out for five and a half yards and a first down out to the uh, Michigan 35-yard line. Stevenson is about 15 yards out. Here's the reverse Smith coming back this side and is going to be hit and dropped. Pat Harris makes the stop on him. Helped out also by Kevin Motts. The reverse from Jim Smith. And I think they've lined up not more than three times in that particular play and have worked it on two occasions, though not that uh, good. 
White now replaces Kurt Stevenson as they split in. He goes to the left. Leach back to throw. Looks over that way. Throws over the middle. It is incomplete. Just off the fingertips of Jim Smith. And it was on the same play that they had gone for the touchdown earlier. That time it was just off the fingertips as Smith was headed for the goal line. And the thrown a little bit high. Couldn't hold it. But uh, Smith is a very, very quick man. Quite difficult for a linebacker to cover him. Leach is one out of five, but the one completion, a 64-yard pass play for the go-ahead touchdown. Leach in underneath. The wide receivers to the left. Here is a fake to Davis. Leach keeps the football. Comes across the 40, 45, 50. He's to the 45. He's down to the 41-yard line of Purdue. Big run by Leach. First down, Michigan. Running the option to perfection on that time, found some room on the left around the left end and took it all the way down to the Purdue 41-yard line on the first down for Michigan. We played nearly two minutes here in the sec in the fourth period of today's game. Purdue would have had a great chance at good field position. Kurt Stevenson comes wide to the right side. Here is Davis up the middle for about four or five as he takes it inside the 40 down near the 36-yard line. Gain of about five by Russell Davis. Now running at fullback for the Michigan Wolverines. Davis and Lytle in the eye. Leach second and five. Leach using the long count. He gives to Lytle. Lytle up the middle. First down as he takes it inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. A gain of about six by Rob Lytle. And he is stopped at the 29-yard line. Rock Supan making the stop. Smith is out wide to the right side. Two tight ends. Here is Leach keeping the football. Pitches back to Lytle. Fumble the football, and it is uh, recovered by the Boilermakers on the near sideline. And coming up with the football is Blaine Smith. Smith recovering the fumble. Boilermakers get the ball on a recovery by Blaine Smith, his first of 1976. And a big one, John. Skibinski and Durking are in the eye. The Boilermakers first and 10 at their own 29. Here is a give to Skibinski. Tries the right side. Comes across the 30 to the 31-yard line. A gain of about two or three. Steve Graves, the middle guard from Cleveland, Ohio, puts the stop on John Skibinski as he tests that ankle right away. Boilermakers have wide receivers either side. Townsend to the left and Arnold is to the right side. Skibinski and Durking are in the eye. Durking has had a splendid day today. Here's Vitale back to throw. Dumps it out here to Durking. He's at the 30. Looking for him at the 35. He's thrown down as he approaches the 39-yard line. And it is very, very close to a first down on the near sideline. Let's get 15 seconds for station identification. You are listening to Purdue Football. Your network host, the Coca-Cola Bottlers of Indiana. You're listening to Purdue Football on WROZ, Evansville, Indiana. Wide to the right side. He's the only wide receiver. Eubank and Wergowski tight end. Here's a keeper by Vitale. And Vitale clears it to the 41 and a first down. Vitale sneaking it up the middle. Got a couple of yards and a first down for the Boilermakers. Time is now working against Purdue. Jappy Oliver to the left side. Here is a give to Skibinski up the middle. He's able to get only a couple as he moves it out across to the 43-yard line before, guess who? That's right, CO, Calvin O'Neill, the linebacker who is in on about 80% of the plays. Ray Smith and Reggie Arnold are that way. Vitale pitches back to Durking, loops it. He's at the 45, goes outside of the 50, first down 45, all the way down to the 43 or 44-yard line. And there's Calvin O'Neill chasing him down again. But that time, Vitale pitched at the right time to Durking, looped it around, and took it all the way down to the Michigan 43-yard line. Big gainer for Scotty Durking. Scotty Durking, first and 10 at the Michigan 43. Skibinski gets the call. He takes it to the 41-yard line, a gain of two. As Skibinski tries to go up the middle, John Hennessy, Greg Morton. Here's a pitch back to Durking. He cuts back at the 40, still on his feet, down to the 36-yard line. Another good run by Scotty Durking. Found the hole on the right side before Morton, a tackle, and Tom Seaburn, the end, came up to stop him just shy of the Michigan 35-yard line. Third down and three at the 36. Durking trying to right. He is going to get the first down on the second effort as he moves it to the 32-yard line. I thought he was going to be tackled at about the 35. He broke the tackle, then got down to the 32 before Jim Pickens, a cornerback, and the safety man Dwight Hicks makes the stop on him. 
was a very, very slight opening. Ray Smith to the left, Reggie Arnold's in the slot. It is first down and 10 at the Michigan 32. The option by Vitale gets to Durkin, cuts the corner, can't get it. He's hemmed in on the near sidelines at the 30. Vitale kept it to the very last second. It was Tom Sebron in the end, and Jerry Zuber, a safety, making the stop. They forced him out of bounds right at the 30-yard line. Second down and nine, just shy of the 30-yard line. Here's Vitale giving to Durking, tries to middle and can't get it. He goes to the 30, then is twisted around by Steve Graves, the middle guard. And so the Boilermakers now are faced with third down and long yardage, third and nine at the 30-yard line. Smith is to the left side, that's the close side of the field. It's third down, eight yards to go at the 30-yard line of Michigan. The Boilermakers needing a big one here. Vitale back to throw, looks, throws out to the right flat. It's caught by Skibinski at the 25. He is to the 20, down to the 15, and it's up down at the 11-yard line. A big, big play from Vitale to Skibinski. Dwight Hicks finally caught it. Nobody was around. Skibinski had gotten to the right flat over there and then did a beautiful job. He made sure he got the first down, then turned it on down to the 11-yard line. First and 10 for the Boilermakers at the 11. First and 10 at the Michigan 11 for the Boilermakers. Reggie Arnold comes wide to the left, two tight ends. Here is a pitch back to Durking. Durking trying to get over the right side, gets to the 9-yard line. Maybe to the line. He was pushed back a little bit to the 10. If they give him his forward progress, it will be inside the 10-yard line. Calvin O'Neill. You know, he could throw away this chart and just call Calvin O'Neill on about every play. Second and nine at the 10-yard line. Here is Skabinski getting the call. Vitale pulls it back in and slides over the left side as he takes it down near the seven-yard line. Skabinski physically had that ball, and Vitale just didn't release it, pulled it back in, and it's a good thing he did because Skabinski would have been decked. Jerry Vogel and Jerry Zuber make the tackle on Vitale, who takes it down to the seven. We have five and a half minutes to play on this one. Giarno, he is to the left. Vitale on third down and six. Here is a give to... Uh, Durking comes around and he comes over to the left and gets to the six. And he got to the left side and that uh, foiled what they were trying to do there, John. They'll be having to kick if they elect to go for the field goal from the, uh, and they will, from the hash mark on the left side. Calvin O'Neill stopped Durking at the uh, five, six yard line. Waiting for the snap. A 23 yard field goal attempt. Here's the kick by Supan. It's got the distance. It is up. It is good. And the Boilermakers have taken the lead. 16 to 14 over the nation's number one team, the Michigan. A 23 yard field goal by Rock Supan. His fifth field goal conversion of the year, five out of eight. And the Boilermakers lead with four minutes and 20 seconds left to play, 16 to 14. There's a timeout. Scott Sabreen to kick off for the Boilermakers. High, taken down here at the nine-yard line by Smith. He comes down to the 15, tripped up as he crosses the 20 out to the 23-yard line by Pat Harris. So, with four minutes and 16 seconds showing on the clock, Purdue leads Michigan 16 to 14. And Michigan is 77 yards away from a touchdown. Scott, I think we must have 60 in here now. The students may have come over. Here is Leach at quarterback with the eye formation of Davis and Lytle. Leach gets the snap. He gives to Lytle up the middle. Oh, he's stopped by Mott as he comes across the 25 to the 28-yard line. And the clock shows four minutes and seven seconds. Right now, you've got to prevent the big, big play, the big run that Lytle is capable of doing. That's the thing that Coach Alex Agassi talked about all week. Second and four at the 29 for the Wolverines. Wide receiver left. Here is Leach back to throw. Looking. Throws it over here. It is caught by Smith at the 35. He's at the 40 and knocked out of bounds in the near sideline. Up to the 43-yard line. There's the big play, John. He also got out of bounds to stop the clock. So it's up to the Michigan 44-yard line. Going wide to the left side is Stevenson. Smith is in the slot. Leach gets the call. He fakes to Davis. Leach running by the... Uh, Option gives it off to Lytle. Lytle is in then as he comes across the 45, out to the 47, to the 48-yard line. And making the tackle is Travline. Travline helped out by Kim Kreif. So they mark it at the 48-yard line. Three minutes and 14 seconds left to play in the game. Here is Leach with a wing to the right side, and Stevenson over that way. Here is a give to Davis, tries the middle, slides off across the 50, and takes it to about the 47-yard line. 
And that will be a first down, I believe. Or they will have to measure. They're looking and they will have to measure. They will have to measure with two minutes and 41 seconds left to fly. The length of the football more than they needed. Coming wide to the right side is Rick White replacing Stevenson. Here is Leach. Back to throw. Throws long down the side. It is caught by Smith. Murray dropped the football. Oh, he would have been gone. He had caught it at the 10, took a step, and lost the football. That was Katie bar the door. Smith knows that. I know Leach knows it, and we're looking for Michigan to try it again. Second down and 10 at the 46-yard line at Purdue. 2.20 remaining in this one. The Boilermakers lead 16 to 14. Leach makes to Davis, keeps the football, and takes it inside the 40 and is rolled down at about the 38-yard line. So it will bring up a big third down play for the Wolverines. They have it at the 38-yard line. It'll be third down and about two yards to go. Ken Lauschen made the tackle on Leach. Here is Leach waiting for the snap. He's using the long count. Boilermakers almost jump off sides and do, and here is a give on the left side. It goes to Russell Davis, and Davis moves it to the 36. And that would be a first down, I think, anyway, but the uh, penalty is going to be called against the Boilermakers. They jumped offside. Time has been very, very critical. So it's first and 10 at the Purdue 33 for the Wolverines. Davis is fake two. Here is uh, Leach the throw. Throws it down. Here it is. Incomplete. Oh, what a crab line. Crab line and Jerome King had Smith hemmed in that time. Crab line got in front and knocked the ball away. And that one was a clutch one, too. Right on the goal line. 1.14 left to play. This one was called on third down on the Purdue 34-yard line. So I think definitely Michigan plans it. Second and 10 at the 33 of Purdue for Michigan. They trail 16 to 14. Here's the fake to Davis. Leach gets it back to Huckley, cutting the corner. He is going to be tackled as he comes across the 30 down to the 25-yard line. And that's a gain of about eight yards. The clock shows one minute. Now there is a timeout. Timeout has been called by Michigan. You're listening to Purdue Football, your network host, the Coca-Cola Bibblers of Indiana. Back on now. Ian Davis will be in the eye. Smith will go to the left side. Leach in underneath. Two tight ends. Leach waiting for the snap. It. He gives to Lytle, tries the left side, gets a couple as he moves it down to the 23-yard line. 55 seconds, 53, Ken Lauschen makes the tackle. The clock now is stopped with 55. I'm not sure where the official stopped it or Michigan called the timeout. Michigan, well, they decide to measure. First and 10 at the 23 now. Leach in underneath with the eye formation of Davis and Lytle. Here is a fake to Davis. Leach is tackled behind the line of scrimmage back at the 4, at the 24, by Cripe and Crosby. Michigan stops the clock with 40 seconds. The timeout. You are listening to Purdue Football, your network host, Coca-Cola Bottlers of Indiana. 16 to 14. The Wolverines have two wide receivers to the right side. Leach with Davis and Lytle in the eye. Leach using the long count, gives to Davis. He is up the middle to the 21-yard line, just diving up to the 21. I don't think Michigan has any more timeouts, do they? Yes, I guess they do have one more left, but they do not take it. 28 seconds. It's third down and eight at the 21. Leach waiting for the snap. He's using the long count. He gets to Lytle, tries to left side, hits the 19, and is hemmed in by the Boilermakers. Now Michigan stops the clock. And it's all down to a field goal try. Arrington, Jackson, Manella made the tackle at the 19-yard line. 14 seconds left to play. Bob Wood will be brought on for a field goal attempt. He has a long of 51, which tied the Michigan record. Mike Landry hit one in 1973. Wood is six out of eight in the field goal department. It'll be a... 37-yard field goal attempt. We're waiting for the snap. It's down. Here it is. It is up. It is off. No good. And the Boilermakers will have upset the Michigan Wolverines as Bob Wood misses a 37-yard field goal attempt with only nine seconds remaining. 
and Purdue will have knocked off the nation's number one team of Michigan, 16 to 14, and they're celebrating in West Lafayette. Joe, the Boilermakers are all over the field with nine seconds left to go. The Purdue team has left the bench. They've come on the field, down on the far side, playing fifth, and a couple of other Boilermakers are hugging each other. They are celebrating this win prematurely, but with nine seconds left to go, all they can hope for is to fall on that ball, run out the clock, and there goes the flag out because the Boilermakers were on the field. That'll be a five-yard penalty against Purdue, but at this particular point, that might not make any difference at all. Getting the snap, ball, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The Boilermakers have defeated the nation's number one ranked team, the Michigan Wolverines. They do it 16 to 14 with a field goal with four minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the game by Rock Supan, and the distance was 23 yards. And the Boilermakers have done it 16 to 14. They break a seven game win streak by Michigan over them. The last time that the Boilermakers defeated the Michigan here at Ross H Stadium was in 1962 when they did it 37 to nothing. Purdue's last win of the series was in 1966 in Ann Arbor when it was 22 to 20.